Testing, testing, testing. Start streaming. Connect streaming software. All right, we're gonna try to do a live stream today of a MacBook board repair. MacBook, because that's what I have in front of me today, and we're gonna start with a note. And I wanted to do this video because this is a fight to repair video. <clears throat> so you can hit mute on that. So <clears throat> Brad's gonna help me out so that I can see the comments on this, at least in theory. So I recently joined the board of Lewis Rossman's Repair Preservation Group. Super excited about that. So it's me and Lewis and Justin Millman, who is a you know, fantastic guy, and we're going to try and really try to get some traction on this right to repair stuff. So I wanted to do this video of just what it looks like for someone like me to try and fix this MacBook. How do I find a replacement chip? So what we have here is a MacBook from Bridget who told us that we could record it for YouTube. And here's what her note says. Her note says that she has a MacBook Air that she purchased last year for teaching remote. So Bridget is a teacher. And a little over a week ago, a water bottle broke in the same bag that the laptop was in and it was shut, but it was sitting in a small pool of water for less than a minute. I was walking from one classroom to the next. That is a total drag. I can imagine just how crushing it feels to realize that happened. It was on, I shut it down, I left it for 48 hours, I didn't power it on, and now it's been over a week and it still does not turn on. I've purchased a new MacBook, so I'm not desperate, but it seems wasteful to not at least see if there's something that can be done. So Bridget is wanting to fix this MacBook just so that it doesn't just get pitched into the recycling bin because of a small accident like that. So either this board is going to be completely trashed with water damage everywhere, or it's going to be really focal. And if we can figure out where the water went, and clean that damage, then we might be able to fix this MacBook. At least that's our hope. So let's dive in. So the first thing that we did was we opened this thing up, and by we, I mean Brad. Brad, who's in the Witness Protection Program and refuses to, to be on YouTube, but that's okay. Maybe one day he will finally put the mafia behind bars and... Why is it all dark now? Did I do that? There we go. Live stream hype. Hula. Hey, Jessa. Yay! I can kind of see comments now, but I don't know why it's all dark. Okay. Almost. Oh, look. It, it just needs you to hold there. Hold it there the whole time. All right. That's not <laughs> happening. All right. Let's see. Maybe it just went to sleep. Is that good? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Now let's hit... Hand camera, boom. And let's see if you guys can still see. Uh, can you still hear on hand camera? Let's see, all right, so on hand camera, this is the MacBook. So the MacBook, Brad has taken the board out and the board went in it right here. So this is the entire brain of your 2020 MacBook Air. This is about, a, we looked it up, this MacBook to replace it would be about 1100 bucks. And it's a 512 gig i5 MacBook Air. Now it's also got this piece, and this is the piece that ended up being the problem. This is, look at this guy. This is just a little tiny little headphone jack. Now because it's a relatively new MacBook, you can't just go down and say, give me another one of these things. I'd like to be able to do that. But the, these are in short supply because you cannot order them. And that's the whole point of the right to repair is that you can't just say, oh, here's a little piece I want to replace because everything else is great and I want to buy that because Apple will not sell that piece to me. So I'm left trying to fix that piece. And that's what's really challenging on this stuff. All right, so let's go back. So the first thing we did is we said, maybe it's not turning on just because there's been water in the battery or the screen or the keyboard or trackpad or something like that. So we disconnected everything and then put the board just like it is into a known good housing and it did boot up. So the no power problem is something to do with something plugged in. So we just did elimination testing and that's what narrowed it down to. It's this piece right here. So this board, the entire computer is working. There's nothing wrong with it. That's in the good pile. This housing 
is working. The screen is working. The battery, the it's all working. So we've narrowed the problem down to this headphone jack. Now let's look under the microscope and see if we can guess why the headphone jack itself is not working. So let's go to the microscope. Where is my microscope? There we go, microscope. And now let's look at this under the microscope. And now this thing has been through ultrasonic and I've done some work on it already when I said, hey, this might make a neat little video. So this thing is really simple, right? It's just a headphone jack, right? And let's see. On this side, you can tell, like, there's really no sign of water. And there's this, like, coating everywhere. So water can't really go there. So that's not the deal. That's not the problem. This was really never wet on this side. But over here, we can see that there is that right there. That is water damage. See a little oxidation? And I've cleaned it up a few times. But there was definite corrosion on this top of the board. And even this connector, you know, we kind of had to rework some of these pins of it. But right now, that connector is probably going to work. Everything on here, you know, there's no reason why would this piece kill that whole MacBook. But it does. So reliably, if you put this piece, put this little headphone jack, put it in the MacBook, MacBook dead. Take it out, MacBook alive. Put it in, MacBook dead. This thing is killing the MacBook, this little headphone jack daughter board. But why? So the only thing that really makes sense, why would it some little piece like this for headphone? How would that be able to take out your whole computer? It's going to be because of crossing connections under a chip or within a chip. So you can see that I've taken off a chip right here. So right there, that's the only possible cause because this is the only chip. Look, it's the only chip. The only actual integrated circuit chip that has a spot where corrosion could connect together balls underneath it, effectively crossing and scrambling lines that go everywhere throughout the whole machine. So that chip's got to be the bad guy. Why that chip? Because remember, on this side of the board, the only other chip, these guys, they have no, they're waterproof. That's the guy. So how do we prove that? Well, I took the chip off. And you can see that the chip is gone. So I took the chip off, desoldered it, hot air, boom, took the chip off. And I'll show you what it looked like. So I still have it right here. Here he is. There's the chip, right? So let's look at this guy. And we can even read, like, numbers on it, right? We can see TI. So, okay, it's made by Texas Instruments. And I can even see TAS577 and then... Is that a zero or an O L C zero? And look at how corroded it was. Ugh! That's why Bridget's MacBook died due to water bottle damage right there. All right, so um, looks like someone took a bite out of that little board. No, this little board is perfectly fine. He's fine. All right, so now let's do a test. Let's say what happens if with the chip off, we chip off the board and we put this thing back in, does the MacBook boot up? Answer, yes it does. So now this board is working, except it doesn't have that chip. So what we know for sure now is that Bridget's whole MacBook is great. It barely got wet. The, the only spot water went was under this one chip. This is fantastic. This is an $1,100 MacBook Air that is all we need to do, I mean, it works right now, but it doesn't have audio function, right? Which is kind of important, especially if you're using it to teach school. You know, maybe, a lot, maybe it's a lot easier if you just can't hear the students and it's just a big like, listen, I'm gonna tell you, I'm not gonna listen. It's a one-way only teaching street. Maybe that will work great for Bridget. That's where we are right now. But if we wanna bring back audio, we have to replace this chip. Right? So we have to replace this chip. And that's the point of the video. That, you know, if you go to the Apple Store, so Bridget goes down to the Apple Store, they are not going to replace the chip. They're not, gonna, they're not willing to, to solve this problem at all. And they're going to tell you you need, you know, a, a repair that is <laughs> extremely expensive because they're just going to replace the whole MacBook, right? 
They don't do this, le they choose not to do this level of sort of troubleshooting by elimination and drilling down to the actual problem itself. I mean, this MacBook is beautiful, except for this one chip. All right, so how do we go about replacing the chip? Where do I get another one? So let me show you what that process looks like. So the first thing that I can do is just say, have I ever seen this chip before? Do I recognize this chip? just from experience. And it looks a lot like the, the chestnut display driver on an iPhone, but he's not quite the same. So the next thing I can do is just say, let me try to just, what if I just Google the, the like code on the chip? Maybe I could just go buy one. So let's do that first. Let's go to the browser and let's see what happens if I try to order one of these on the internet. So let's just try it. We'll go, we'll just go to Google right now and we'll type in what I can see. So this is a Texas Instruments chip. And you can see I've, this is what I've already been trying. TAS577. And then I can't tell if it's a zero, but I'll guess zero LC zero. But it could be O's. Search. All right. And what do we have? We have a bunch of stuff that is in different languages and none of this really looks like anything that I can understand. But Taobao, all right, that's like the China eBay. Now, it's really tough if you don't speak Chinese and you don't have a Chinese bank account, but let's go there anyway. So we'll click this link. And this is exactly what this looks like and why I decided to make a video is so that you could, you could see that when I try to fix Bridget's MacBook, the internet says, would you like to buy a toilet? No, I would not. I would like to buy this, what I think is a speaker amp chip. So here with it, we could see toilet, 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 urinal, bidet, and this chip. Uh, the world's trying to tell me to give up on Bridget's MacBook right now. And, you know, it's, that's just ridiculous, right? So I could try, could I just click on this and see, can I, can I order this? This is hard, right? This is what it looks like. I want to be able to go to apple.com and buy either this chip or just to go to apple.com and buy, I'll, I will even buy another little headphone board. So that's the only thing wrong. Let's sell me that. That's what the right to repair is asking for. The right and the ability to not have to shop for Chinese toilets to fix a thousand dollar MacBook just when one thing's wrong, right? So I can't do that. So let's, you know, if I, if I hunt and peck around here, you can go all over the internet. Maybe I could buy these randomly from China and then tell Bridget to wait wait forever for them to come in and then hope that they're actually a match and just kind of install it blindly. That's what independent repair looks like right now. We don't have access to the information that we need to replace things to make things work longer. So that's the deal. Have you tried Lewis? Uh, yes, let's text Lewis right now. That's a great idea. Where's my phone? Let's find out. That's a great idea. I'm getting seasick. Why? What does it look like? Why are you, why are you getting seasick? Um, Nate says, I see you went live. Let's ask Lewis. Um, Lewis, do you have a Texas Instrument um, chip called, what is it, T A? S, this is a great idea. We'll just text Lewis. 5770LC0. My live stream wants to know. All right, maybe he'll just say, yeah, I've got 10 of them in my back pocket. And he'll just drive over here in his new Tesla. And that's one way to solve this, perhaps. But if not, then what are we going to do? So, I, so one option is to just randomly buy something on China and hope that it's the right thing. I'd like to know, though, like what does this chip do? So another strategy is to see if you can locate it on 
some other MacBook board where maybe there's more information and then you could look it up and kind of get a lead like that. So I can get rid of the browser. Let's get rid of the browser. Yeah, so this is a relatively modern A1707. And I, I looked on here. I didn't see one. So I'm just looking to see, can I find a matching chip? None of those. None of those. None of those. Teamwork. Yeah, we're going to do teamwork. The phone a friend style. Yeah, so, so this MacBook, so I, I can't find one. And I could keep doing that, right? But it's really laborious to just hunt and peck on every MacBook ever made to see if you can find a matching chip. But that is one strategy. Another thing that, um, that, that we did do with that, that same strategy is we found a matching chip, right? So we found a matching chip by looking not on the little daughter board, but somewhere on this is Bridget's main board, which it's worth, worth it for you guys to see. Look at how beautiful this board is. There's no water on any of this. And I looked at, when I looked at this originally, I was like, hey, that looks like that same chip that's all corroded on the other board. But now, of course, I've forgotten where it was. But never, never fear. There it is. Boom. Ha ha. I found you. Right? There's the same guy. See? TA55770 LC0. There he is. So now we can at least figure out who he is because some schematics, but not a board view, have fallen off a truck in China. So how do I figure out the identity, the you whatever, whatever? What is that chip? So we can use a similar board view that fell off a truck because, again, we can't just go to Apple and say, I'd like to have the schematic for this device that I'm working on that you made, just like all devices have always had the schematic bundled with them when you buy them since the beginning of time until you change that. So the schematic, just how these pieces go together. I mean, I, can, I could map this out myself, and that is what we're going to have to do is to take the chip off and get a multimeter and see what's connected to what. I'm having to do things like Google the number of the chip rather than just look it up on the schematic itself. And there, that's, a, that's a really, really poor way for the world to work, right? Ah, the black plastic square, yes. Okay, so here's what we can do now. We can say, all right, what is that? And we found it here on the schematic and on the schematic, let's see, this is the actual board right here. It's in position U6400, so it's this guy. All right, so now we can get some, get some idea. Oh, yeah, I see it says TAS5. Oh, so I thought it was 5.5, five. so now maybe that's why I was Googling toilets. So now we get a little bit more information, and we can even see what this chip does. What does the thing do? Power in. Power in, 1V8, 1V8, power in from PP bus G3H speaker. All right, and then we've got these outputs. We see some coils, output P and N, speaker, connector, left, probably, output. Okay, so now we know, ah, this chip is a speaker amp. Speaker amps are, are common. Where did you have to go to find the schematic? Probably a task on its own. Yes, so if you want to find a schematic, whether or not you can find a schematic is going to be whether or not it ever fell off a truck in China. So the second a schematic falls off a truck in China, somebody's going to find it on the side of the road. Nine seconds later, it's going to be on the internet. And you'll be able to find it just by searching for the board number, 820-01958. Then you'll be able to find it wherever it is in the world, and it doesn't take very long for it to be everywhere after that. All right, so... This is not much of a help because it's still, I still can't, you know, I can't go buy this. What I did find is on a similar board that is really common is a similar chip. So here's U6400, which then I just said, all right, U6400, maybe there's a U6400, is it the same chip? So this is a different MacBook. This is the 820-01521 schematic. 
But we can see, okay, there's one V8 power, one V8 power, and on this one, PP bus G3 hot. So it's a, you know, a little bit the same, but a little bit different. And now we can see, does this, is this chip identical? I don't know. This one is PTAS5770LB2. Can I use this chip in this position? Can I swap them? I don't know, and I have no way to know. So we have to like experimentally determine that. But this chip is a little bit more commonly available. So maybe we could go get one of those, but we'd have to do a test. That's what repair looks like. All right. Um, digital audio converter with amplifier. Yes, exactly right. So now at least we know that, and we know that because of stuff that fell off the side of the road in China. We'd prefer, and it would, wouldn't it feel great to be able to just get this information about the device that Bridget has already paid $1,100 for that she wants to fix, that I'm willing to fix. And the only thing that's really making it challenging is the lack of a being able to source a reliable chip. And the fact that you can't Google that number. Why not? Because Apple routinely engages in, in these privacy wars to say, hey, listen, we want to buy this chip from you. Don't tell anybody, and you better take it off the internet so nobody else can figure it out. And that's really challenging when it's a pretty common thing. All right, so now what are we gonna do to try and actually fix Bridget's MacBook? Well, I can't say for sure that, uh, you know, that a chip that I randomly get from China is gonna work, maybe. I can't say for sure that using a similar chip is gonna work without doing some experiments. And in order to do those experiments, I, I have to be willing to destroy thousands of dollars worth of MacBooks. And it's just really tough for you know, the, the hoops you gotta jump through just to try to save the environment from throwing away Bridget's MacBook. So what are we gonna do? Let's see whether or not the problem was actually Bridget's speaker amp is it actually a dead chip, which it may well be, because it looks pretty rough. So if you didn't see it before, this chip is beat to hell, right? It looks like the toilets that they're trying to sell me in China. All right, so can we actually clean up this chip? Can we reball it? Can we make this chip restored enough to actually go in and function in her device, which is not a great solution. I wanna get a new chip. This chip probably costs maybe five bucks. Right? And it's the only thing wrong with an $1,100 MacBook. Why can't we replace this chip? The world votes to replace this chip. And if you want to add your voice to say, I think the world should be able to identify source by this common vanilla chip, to be able to make a, not throw away an $1,100 piece of electronics, the world should do it. If you wanna support that mission, then go over and, and tell us about it, either in the comments below this video or over at Repair Preservation Group's new website, fighttorepair.org, fighttorepair.org, and you can, uh, go, go check that out. Lewis will be, you'll see why Lewis will be shortly announcing a logo contest. So fighttorepair.org for the Repair Preservation Group website. Go check that out. All right, in the meantime, I guess that we are going to just see what happens if we try to resurrect this chip. And if that doesn't work, that's really the, our stopping point, at least for today. And then Bridget can either take this MacBook and say, sorry, it doesn't have sound anymore, or we can you know, try to order a chip from China, or let's see if, uh, if Lewis has any. Nope, he, you know, nope. So that's that. All right, so there's, there is no like easy way. You, you can't do the, the thing that the world should expect to do, which is if you're willing to put in the time to diagnose this problem and get down to the level, you should at least be able to go to apple.com and buy that headphone jack board with the chip on it. It's clearly a replacement part. This thing, I wanna buy this Apple. I wanna buy this for fair and reasonable terms. 
This is the only thing wrong with an $1,100 MacBook. Don't make me throw it away. All right, now let's see. So we can see whether or not this is able to be resurrected for Easter. All right. Let's see. All right. So the main thing it's going to come down to is the really, really beat up part of the chip here, which it's interesting to do kind of like these like failure analysis stuff. Right here, that is, that's the, that might be too far gone. Right there is, you can even count it and figure it out. This is the A1 here, A1, B1, C1, C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5. I don't think we can rejuvenate this one. I don't think it's going to work. Well, let's answer the phone. Hi, this is Jessa. I am in the middle of live streaming a video. Is this a sales call? Uh, no, no. Uh, you were listed as a reference for uh, Peter uh, Horgan. Oh, okay, um, yeah. He was, <laughs> he was interested in joining the ski patrol. Do you want me to call back a better time? Or, uh, yeah, you can try me back later. But Parker okay. was our, uh, was our uh, video manager, and he did a great job, so we would totally vouch for him. <laughs> but we can talk more about him later. All right, I'll give you, I'll give you a call back and have a look at the word and see if that works. Out. Okay, sure. All right, thanks. Thank you. That was the ski patrol calling to see if I would be a reference for Parker, which I don't really understand what ski patrol possibly does in April, but, you know, more power to them. So Parker is uh, our uh, video, video editor who has been busy and now apparently wants to work for ski patrol. Best of luck to you, Parker. And I hope you get the job. All right. So look at that. Yee! Look at that C5. That may be... That looks pretty classic for too far gone. So I looked it up, and these two... Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> That looks exactly why that chip's dead. That is not going to work. That's where the, I think, the battery power connects to that chip. So what I'm going to do is give up on that part of the chip. I mean, now it's just kind of like, well, why not? Why not take a stab here? I am going to say that there's too much risk of connecting battery to ground and therefore making her macbook not boot but i'm pretty sure that this other this other input is also battery so maybe it would still work if we just delete the one let me show you what i'm talking about i might be i might be crazy so let's see when i look at the chip let's see what do you think brad what should i do here is this the chip this is the, the 1958, 820-1958. Yeah, so we can look at the chip and we can count back from A1, B1, C1. Then we can say C4 and C5 are the pins that are really bad. And here we can see exactly what they are. C4 and C5. Yep, C4 and C5 are plugging in VBAT. That's the power into the chip. And the line here is PP bus G3 hot, speaker left. And if we follow that, most likely we're going to see that it's a branch of the main power rail PP bus G3 hot, which means that if this chip itself right there at C5, I mean, look at C5, look at it. Let's see, can, does that work? Look at it. Look at how torn up it is. That is the main power to the entire MacBook going right to that spot. 
And it's real easy to see that just that corrosion could be making it touch ground. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, this is totally an experiment. We're going to say that we got C4 and C5. They are both the same line. So let's just forget about C5, cover it up, and see if this chip can work just on C4 alone. And that's the kind of crap that you have to do, wasting up a bunch of time here to try to help Bridget resurrect this MacBook. Because why? Because I can't go order this chip brand new, which is what I want to do to solve this problem. Can't do it, not available, support the fight to repair. All right, so how are we gonna actually execute this? Let's see, Tony Tone says he's gotta go get some work done. Fine, I see that, all right. And let's see. Yeah, so Apple wants you to believe that you can't, you, that this stuff is like, you, you, it's not, possible but it totally is possible they just choose not to do it but does their does their choice to not engage in personalized repair their choice to say look we don't have the bandwidth to help you out bridget but here's the new macbook section that's a choice does that mean that the world should put up with that and tolerate that and say great then no one can opt to fix this stuff i would say no all right so now let's cure that little scab with some uv all right and let's see tap it out continuity tests both look connected both look part of the same trace that's right all right can't be fixed buy a new computer and give us your dead macbook that we totally won't repair and sell to somebody else i know it was really funny when i was looking up on the um where's my hand cam when I was looking up how much do these MacBooks cost anyway, <laughs> that's exactly what it says. Here's your Apple.com MacBook section. You too can own this exact MacBook version for only 1100 bucks. And if you give us your MacBook, we'll recycle it for you. And that's ridiculous. Can you not ask Lewis Rossman for this chip? I already did. Let's ask him again. Um, let's see, Cam ran, uh, Cam ran from chat also wants to know if you have this chip. There. It couldn't be easier than that. We will find out. All right. Now the UV cure is over and we can maybe reball this chip. All right, so what are we talking about? We have identified there's nothing wrong with Bridget's $1,100 MacBook Air other than this speaker amp chip, which we can replace if we go onto a toilet website, like literally selling toilets in China, and scroll past the toilets to the only other product offered in the toilet section, which is this chip, buy it for who knows, how long it would take to get here, and then install it and cross our fingers. Or we could use a similar chip that we have no idea whether or not it, was going to, it would work or not, or in what way are they different. And just to know that on the same MacBook, this, the common fault of the CD3215, well, now it's the CD3217, and those similar chips are not compatible. So that's a tough way to go about it. Or we can resurrect the janky chip and see if we can get away with it. All right, Brad, now we're going to learn how to reball. So pay attention. There's going to be a quiz. All right, so reballing. We are going to reball this chip. So let me move all this stuff out of the way, and we're going to do step one of the Jessa method of reballing, which step one is put the chip someplace where you're not going to lose it, because then you're going to look like a total idiot on this live stream. All right, and... If you miss the beginning part, this is all about um, uh, both me and Lewis putting more time into Right to Repair because the thing about this is that if 
Bridget here had all of her data on this computer, which it sounds like she doesn't. She doesn't really care about data. So we're going to do this hand cam version here. Here we go. All right, so we're going to make our dry paste and get ready to reball this chip right now. But the, th the problem, though, is that if you want for people like me or Lewis or Brad or anybody else that puts time into trying to do these personal repairs for people, even yourself, if you want to be able to take a stab at it and get, get your data back on these modern MacBooks, then if you want us to be around, then we have to be able to fix stuff. And in order to be able to fix stuff, we can't have every chip impossible to source, and we can't have every uh, bit of information impossible to find, right? So we're going to make dry paste here in advance of reballing. All right, Brad, step one, what is it? Don't lose the chip. Don't, okay, yep, don't lose the chip, very good. And step two, make dry paste. All right, make dry paste. Dry paste is, is key. All right, now step three. Locate, try as hard as you can to find a stencil that is going to match. Now this looks like a pretty common pitch, so I'm not super worried about that. All right, so let's go back, and there he is. And let's see, what stencil do you think is going to match this, Brad? iPhone 6. All right. Let's see if you're right. iPhone 7. iPhone 6. Let's see, is there a chip on the iPhone 6 baseband that matches this? Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Your iPhone 6 baseband CPU has a section of it that is an exact match for your MacBook 2020 speaker amp chip. All right, so we're going to hold that down. All right, Brad. So with these, you, know, you could tape it. I'm not going to. So if I'm not going to tape it, then I kind of need to like kind of have some pressure there sort of you know, all, all the time. Before I get ready to put the paste on, I'm going to set up my hot air. Low and slow. So I'm going to move this on. Step one, cut a hole in the box. Step two. Put your chip in the box. All right. Let's see. You won't get Apple to sell you chips, nor will the government force them, says Ishmael Martinez. Well, maybe you're right, but we are certainly going to try. All right. They don't have to sell us chips. That's not even in the bill. It's just you're not allowed to, to make it impossible for the people that actually make the chips. You can't say... You're not allowed to sell it to anybody but us. That would be the idea. Will it work? Don't know. All right. So now we got our dry paste, and we're going to stick it in here. All right. It tends to boil down to this, says Jimbo. Why would you want to prohibit Apple from maximizing their profit? I'll, I'll answer that. Because it's not in the best interest of Jimbo's grandchildren. That's why. Because Jimbo's grandchildren are going to say, you know what, granddad? We think it's a big, raw, shitty deal that you left us with an already been raped piece of shit, carbon everywhere, earth that you can't even live on anymore. And we're pissed about it. What did you do to put a stop to that? And Jimbo's going to say, well, nothing. I just really want to make sure that those companies could protect their profits. Sorry. All right, so we're going to make it have pretty balls. And we're going to kick out that C5 ball because we don't want that, that kind of ball. Luke says that he will using his 2010 MacBook Pro well into the future. Alex says, I think we need to be calling out Texas Instruments and all these other companies and the way they come back with their damage control. I think you're right. I think that we should say, hey, Texas Instruments. In fact, that's, what, that's a video I'd like to do. In fact, I got I to gotta send another message to Lewis. That's, this is something I don't want to forget. He was asking me about like what video to, to do. Oh, by the way, Lewis says, 
No, he doesn't have this chip. All right, here's a video idea. Here's a video idea. Call Texas Instruments and try to buy this chip from my video. That'll be fun. All right, now we got to kick out. We got to kick out this guy. I mean, he'll he'll kick out either way, but we just want to make sure he's not there. All right. Here's our chip. Now we're going to clean up this crap. And Brad, that was, you know, a little fast, so we'll do another demo later. Eddie says, it's my first time live video join. Jessa, my master for four years. Whoa, master. I don't know about that. All right. Well, thanks for joining. Hopefully, we can not make everybody feel super depressed about what it looks like to actually try to fix MacBooks. Did you send Lewis the correct chip number? Yes, I did. Uh, also, Lewis isn't possibly going to ever look that up. I mean, come on. I think that's really funny. Um, let's see. Now we are going to tighten up the balls on Bridget's harmed, but maybe still limping along. Do the BGA stip chips sometimes get stuck on the stencils? Uh, not really. I mean, you, you, sometimes you have to, you know, the flux will become hard like, you know, like maple syrup on, you know, Saturday morning maple syrup. That's easy to, to take care of. But that same maple syrup on Sunday morning, that's what the flux can, will happen to the flux if you just kind of let it hang out there. All right. Now we have a beautiful, beautifully reballed chip that we're going to clean up. All right. Apple is getting more aggressive with making their products unfixable. They sure, they sure are. And they, I don't really care so much about, you know, they, I'm not asking them to sell these chips. Of course, they're not going to do that. I'm asking them to not prevent others from selling these chips. And I'm asking them to sell things like, you know, this chip lives on this, this tiny piece. This is a tiny little headphone daughter board. This is tiny. Sell this to Jessa without requiring me to do all this nonsense that would be part of the IRP program or whatever ridiculous authorized stuff. Read those agreements, everybody. They're going to get out here and measure the size of your parking lot. They're going to make it so that you can't actually do this job. And if you do do this job, then they would take away your ability to sell this thing. Like, it's, it's incredibly aggressive and incredibly anti-repair. Don't be fooled by authorized repair. Authorized repair is rarely repair. It's sales. All right. Now let's look at this. Looks beautiful. But, of course, they always look beautiful from that angle. So let's kind of tip him up and say, do you look like you are... He looks kind of like a, a kid that, that uh, just went to the dentist. All right, so he's got that C4 is happening, C5 is gone. Now we're going to stick that back on. All right, Nate Miner is here. Hey, Nate. I was just talking to Nate. Nate is uh, generating a placeholder graphic for the fight2repair.org logo contest that you will hear all the details about very soon from Lewis Rossman. And I hope that you guys will all check that out and hopefully submit a fun logo, a little tiny logo. And Nate, I hope that you win because you obviously can make better logos than me. My logo got voted down. All right. So Ned is, is telling me that you know, an aftermarket, you might be able to find an aftermarket provider that would have this thing. And, and, and that's kind of the point, right? Like I could, I could, I could get a, one of these boards from somebody else's MacBook, right? But 
How do I know that I can swap it in here without the MacBook saying, that's not my daughter board because it doesn't have my serial number? Right, that's the point. I want to be able to buy this from the manufacturer. I want to be able to buy it from Apple or from the people that actually made it and it has their quality control. I want for Bridget's MacBook, I, I just want her to have this MacBook back fixed. There's nothing wrong with it except for a tiny single drop of water. Like an accident when you're a teacher with a water bottle for one minute shouldn't cost you $1,100. That's crazy. And the only reason it does is because they are able to have a monopoly on this part. And that's wrong. All right. Now, Brad, do you remember where the dot goes? Yeah, bottom left. Yeah, the dot points at that doohickey. All right, so it's a little janky because there's a lot of plastic going around. So we will now crank some heat back up and try to solder this chip back on. And then I'm going to hand this off to Brad and we see what happens. All right, now the board will explode with only C4 connected, says Jimbo. Well, don't worry, Jimbo, because if I... If this board explodes, it'll probably take me out with it, and then that would just be one less person to interfere with Apple getting their due profits, maximizing their profits. All right. And you know what? They can maximize their profit as much as they want. But if you're going to do it, you got to own it, which means you maximize your profit by saying nobody can buy the daughter board. I'm going to make videos that say you're a douchebag for doing that. And that's just the way it is. All right, let's see if we can get this chip back on here without having to reball it again. Oh no. I think I might have to hold it. It's balancing on the bottom side of that of that headphone jack. All right, now let's get it fast and give it the imperceptible nudge just so that we can be, we can be sure. Jessa, my local school account now uses M1. Already swapped three liquid ones. Okay, so it sounds like this is a signature fault, which is all the more reason for Apple to sell me the chip because if it's a signature fault on this board, this one chip is the only thing wrong. I want to replace the chip. I want to replace the chip. So you can find out whether or not this works because iPad Rehab is definitely going to go buy those Chinese ones, try them, and we will let you know. If they work out, we will sell them on store.ipadrehab.com if we test them out, but man, it's just such a pain. Just want to be able to buy a legit chip. All right, Brad, now I am going to hand this back to you and you're going to let us know what happens, right? Yeah. So you need this and so you need that, All right? So here you go. All right. So uh, Brad's going to go do that while we Let's see what happens if we go to fighttorepair.org. Let's see. Fight. Fighttorepair.org. All right, here we go. Let's see. So let's talk a little bit about this while we wait for Brad to put that back. He's just going to loosely put that back together. All right, where's... Here's our... Here we go. Fight to repair.org is the website of Repair Preservation Group. So Repair Preservation Group is the nonprofit that Lewis Rossman started. And I really like a lot of this website. However, for obvious reasons, it needs a logo. And in fact, the logo needs to say Repair Preservation Group so that we can you know, but they did a really good job of putting, putting this together. And 
you can click here to donate if you haven't donated to Lewis's GoFundMe already. And this is where we're going to list the other projects. Now, this is what I'm most excited about. And this is what I want you guys to help me with, which is what kinds of things can Repair Preservation Group do? What projects can Repair Preservation Group do in its mission? Which its mission is to, um, to support independent repair being affordable, accessible, and reliable for all people. So independent repair, the non-manufacturer controlled. How do we keep folks alive that, can, that choose to do things like help you sort out when just one chip's wrong on your board so that you can get all your data back you know, because, of the, because of this new security stuff? What could we do? One idea that I had would be to encourage younger kids and teens to, to understand that repair is totally possible. It's not some white gloved, you know, fancy thing that you need to have a PhD to be able to do. You know, anybody can, can learn how to do repair of the devices that you touch and feel every day, at least for some things. So I want to do like a summer camp or a um, school programs that would help especially teach girls how to repair. So I'm super excited about a project like that. What are your ideas for projects? All right, I wonder why Lewis didn't go with right to repair instead of fight to repair. That's a really good question. So right to repair as a movement began with the automotive guys in Massachusetts back in 2012. So right to repair is them, the car people. And then there's the digital right to repair and repair.org, which are allies that have been also a big part of the right to repair movement. So that, that URL, right to repair, is squarely Car People Massachusetts, and they've spent $30 million on that. So we decided to go with fight to repair. All right. Let's see. So what happened? Does the MacBook turn on? Tell us. Do we know? Three seconds, we will know. Here comes, here comes Brad, he's gonna tell us. Uh, I'm 13 and I already do repairs and I think everyone should have every right to do so. I think that you're absolutely right. All right. So we're going to see whether or not this chip reball, it really doesn't, it really doesn't matter. I don't love this solution even if it does work but at least Bridget's MacBook will turn on. So it will turn on even without that on there. All right. Bridget's MacBook is alive. Well, let's see it. Let's see it. Prove it. Show me. Hey, Bridget, your MacBook is alive. All right. Do you know if it has, does it play any sound or we don't know? All right, well, function. Catch. Mark and I did that on a stream one time. We had, we had it all planned out. There was a guy who sent us a phone that was like, the note was all very detailed. You know, you could tell this guy, like, He's the kind of guy that, like, that probably buffs out scratches on his car on the weekend. And so we, we, we fixed his problem, but then we had this second identical phone that just for the joke of it, I was like, here, Mark, catch, and threw it across the room, and he dropped it. ba dum bum All right. Jessa, what would you suggest as far as troubleshooting training, as that is my weak point right now? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, I would suggest that you come spend five days with me at Practical Board Repair School. In fact, let's, while we wait for Brad to tell us whether or not we have uh, audio or what's up with audio, iPadRehab.com, click training, and you can see about um, this kind of stuff. Practical troubleshooting to quickly identify problems, blah, blah, blah. So, if you come spend five days with us, which we do once a month, then you'll, you will, we'll teach you how to identify something like this problem, right? What does short circuit mean? What does open circuit mean? What do these chips do? How do these components fail? How do I use my multimeter to figure out failure points? And 
how do I learn to think like a physician, where you kind of marry together the history? When was it last working? The physical exam. I see that there was water here, but nowhere else, right? How do we put together the picture to think like a physician? That's what we try to give you a foundation for at Practical Board Repair School. So thanks for asking. And you can go to ipadrehab.com and sign up right here, training registration. And it'll tell you all about it. You can call us and ask any questions or email us. And I think there's one spot left for April and maybe one spot left for May. And then we're going to be adding courses. In fact, I hope to add a MacBook course sometime this summer. So that, you can look for that coming up. It'll be sort of a hybrid with our regular course. All right, Pete the Norwegian says, sign me up next year when travel is possible. All right, so let's, let's see. So bring it over and tell us, does it say like audio devices or what's the deal? All right, so report from Brad. Brad, what's the deal? The deal is Bridget's MacBook is now working here it is. It's working. He's booted it back up. All right. What's your passcode? Type it in. And it has no sound. So the loudspeaker's not working. Surprise, surprise. So that means that while taking the chip off, cleaning it up, deleting that C5 ball did prevent the PP bus line from being short to ground within the chip or whatever it was doing to actually kill this MacBook. That problem's gone, MacBook boots up, but the chip is still not actually working, so it still actually needs to be replaced. So we either gotta go find another one of these boards, which is probably what we'll do, or we're gonna have to go look even harder to find that chip because we can't source the chip. I really wanna see if Lewis will call Texas Instruments and try to get it. That's what I want to see him do. I am going to, I'm going to make him do it. All right, so it has no sound? No sound. All right, Bridget, your MacBook is alive. It is working. You can get all your information off of it. You can teach to your heart's content to children that will just never ask any questions. They'll just take it all in and they'll never They'll never get in any fights. You'll never hear them crying. You'll never hear anybody, you know, step on anybody else's uh, toes. They're never going to have to ask help for, you know, opening their lunch. So it is the ideal MacBook for you, Bridget. And we are going to continue to go for the hunt for making it work again. All right, so what does this say? Microphone. So it understands that there's a microphone, and it understands that there are speakers and then does it connect to Wi-Fi how are you testing this it's on Wi-Fi right now so we can go to YouTube so we can watch the same live stream cool let's find out if Bridget's a subscriber let's not we're not going to invade her uh... oh look at that like you can see it right there look that's pretty cool you can like see this actual stream the fight to repair let's play it Yeah, so you turn it up, and I don't hear anything. I don't hear all. All right, Bridget, we're going to keep working on it. We're going to see if we can source. We're going to try to source that chip for you, Bridget. You hold on to that, and that is what it looks like for us to actually try and fix an $1,100 MacBook that we figured out exactly what was wrong with it, which is one ball of one chip in one tiny spot, and that's the only thing wrong. But we cannot go to the manufacturer and say, give me the chip. We can't even go to the manufacturer and say, forget about the chip, just give me the piece that the chip is on. Nope, and they have that, they made it. They won't sell it to us, and that's why we need for you guys to help us fight for the right to repair. So there you go and I will see you next time.